In this problem, we're given a power series and we're asked to determine its precise interval of convergence. So that includes the endpoint. Up till now, we've just um, you know, found the, uh, use say like the ratio test or the root test and use that to determine some interval for which it converges, but that's always an open interval. We never really ask about the endpoints before. But now since we have some more theorems about proving when a you know, infinite series converges or diverges, uh, we can use that information to figure out whether uh, the series converges when we evaluate the power series at either endpoint of the interval of convergence. So the first thing we need to do, need to do is um, apply the ratio test uh, to the power series. Uh, the ratio test in this case I think will be the easiest. So we're looking at the limit as uh, k approaches infinity, of uh, the ratio of the k plus 1 term to the kth term. So the k plus 1 term is going to be square root of k plus 1 times x plus 3 to the k plus 1 over square root of k times x plus 3 to the kth power. This is equal to the limit as k approaches infinity of uh, we can cancel out the x plus 3 to the k in the bottom, and that leaves us with x plus 3 uh, in the top. And here this is the same thing as square root of k plus 1 over k. So notice here that, of course, we can split up the absolute value signs, or split up the parts of the product, so we have the absolute value of x plus 3 and the absolute value of the square root of k plus 1 over k. And since we're taking the limit with respect to k, uh, the x plus 3 part does not have a k in it, we can just factor that out. So the absolute value of, um, so this whole thing is equal to the absolute value of x plus 3 times the limit as k goes to infinity. Of, now right here, this is the same thing as uh, square root of 1 plus 1 over k. Now, since square root function is continuous, we can just evaluate the limit inside. In other words, meaning that this is the same thing as the abs square root or absolute value of x plus 3 times absolute value of square root of 1 plus um, the limit of 1 over k uh, as k goes to infinity. So that second term, of course, goes to 0, and we're just left with the square root of 1, or just 1. So this is equal to the absolute value of x plus 3, which is probably going to be a little bit more convenient to write this as x minus, or absolute value of x minus a minus 3. Okay, so the ratio test says that the series converges when x is, or when uh, this ratio is less than 1. So let's just assume it's less than 1 and see what values x has to take on. So this means that x is within uh, 1 of negative 3. This means that, so in other words, x is contained in the interval. The symbol here just means contained in. Uh, it's contained in the interval negative uh, 4 uh, to negative 3, or excuse me, to negative 2. So this is the interval of convergence that we'd find from the ratio test. We know that it converges for any value in here. But we're not so sure about the endpoints, negative 4 and negative 2. Uh, we'd like to be able to say something about those. I mean, if it converges for any value as close as we get to negative 4, we'd like to think there's maybe a possibility that it'll converge at negative 4 as well. Over here, let's just write down the interval of convergence. Now, for it to converge at, say, negative 4, um, all we'll have to do is just plug in 
and we'll have to plug in um, x equals negative 4 into the power series. So p of negative 4 is going to be the sum from uh, k equals 1 to infinity of, let's see, square root of k times, now we have negative 4 plus 3, so we have minus 1 uh, to the kth power. So it's probably easier if we write this um, in a different form. We could write it as an alternating p-series. Uh, so this is sum from k equals 1 to infinity. Uh, now instead of k to the 1 half power, I'm going to write 1 over k to the minus 1 half. Now there's a, so now we have an alternating p-series with p equal to minus 1 half. That's a theorem in the book that if um, p is less than or equal to 0, then an alternating p-series diverges. So this tends towards infinity. Or should not say shouldn't say it tends towards infinity. It could go back and forth between extremely large and extremely large. Or small numbers could go back and forth between two values. Not really sure, but we could say with confidence that it doesn't um, tend towards some finite number. Uh, so let's look at p of negative two. This is equal to square root of k equals one or sum from k equals one to infinity of the square root of k. We have minus 2 plus 3, so that's just 1 to the kth power, so that's our series. Um, can I look at a p-series, and again we'll end up with p less than or equal to 0. Uh, another way to do this is just to use the term test for divergence. Uh, the limit as k goes towards infinity of the kth term is, as k goes to infinity, the square root of k and that does not equal 0. It equals infinity. So by the term test for divergence, I'll just say by uh, divergence test, um, p of minus 2 does not converge. So this is the final interval of convergence. In this case, um, it doesn't converge at either endpoint, so this is as good as we can do. But at least now we know that it's as good as um, as good as it gets. That you know, that there's no question about these two endpoints. These are the full set of values for which the power series will converge.